What do you think, Bray? Can girls make the first move? I think so. Is it like your friend? Your friend said you're not going, they're not going to a movie and it was a movie. I'm Pastor Dustin, and today I'm going to do my best to answer your relationship questions. What does God say about relationships, and how have people changed that living in the world today? Obviously, the Bible has a lot to say about relationships, and I think it's interesting in Genesis, in the creation account, when God is creating everything, he's looking at it and he's saying it's good, and when he sees Adam alone, it's the first time in the Bible he says, this isn't good. And so we know from the Bible that we are designed to be in relationships. God created us to be in relationships. And so it's a necessary and vital part of our life. And so how has the world changed this? I think, you know, there are probably a lot of ways, but I think you see a lot of people when they're going through a difficult time, uh, they can be quick to throw friends away, ghost people, cut people out of their life. And I think it's really important to understand that if God has brought somebody into your life and they're helping you to reach purpose, you know that it's a relationship that God has, has given you and he's brought them into your life. I think it's really important that you remain committed to them, understanding that offense will come there will probably be a lot of times where you hurt their feelings and they hurt your feelings, but I think it's important that you really bring a level of commitment to that relationship. But that's the first thing that comes to mind when I think of this question. Okay. How do you deal with someone close to you when you found out they've been lying to you? This is a great question. And one of my favorite quotes is, I heard somebody say this once. They said, the Bible commands us to love people but it never commands us to trust people. And so trust is something that has to be earned over a long period of time. Trust has to be built. And what's interesting about trust is it can take years to build trust and that trust can be lost in a moment. And so it's really, really important that you understand this and we guard our relationships, right? And we work to continue to uh, build trust and earn trust and all that kind of stuff. So what do you do when trust is lost? I think it's important that you understand that it, it, it might take a lot of time to build that trust again. It, it's going to be a process. Um, and obviously every situation is different. And so I, I think it's important to have the correct expectations in your relationship and understand that as you navigate these things and as you walk through life with people, there will be times where they disappoint you. There will be times where they frustrate you. There'll be times where they tell you things that aren't true. And so obviously we want to have healthy relationships and that uh, to me, I think that starts with communication. If you found that somebody lied to you, I think it's important that you go to them, you confront them, you speak the truth in love and you have a conversation about it, but then also understand that it, it will probably take time to build that trust again. How do you know when someone is the one? You won't know until you're at least 35. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> How do you know if somebody is the one? Listen, this might be controversial, but I don't think that there is one person for everybody on this planet. I know that might break somebody's heart to hear that. Uh, and maybe somebody told you that, that was the way, that's the way that it is. But uh, obviously pray and seek God and, and find out the plan that he has for your life. I think it's important that you know who you are first, what you're called to do in a general sense, at least what your purpose is. You have a direction in life. You have friendships and they're healthy and all that kind of stuff. I think that's important before we get into like the one. So with all of that being said, I think when, when you find somebody <laughs> and they're attractive to you and you're attracted to them, um, I, I think it's important that you sit down and you have conversations and you find out whether or not you're aligned on important issues, you agree on important issues. And then beyond that, I think it's a process. And I think you continue to discover whether or not they are the right person. And so I, I think it's it can almost be a dangerous thing to start with they're the one because I think you almost bring an unhealthy level of commitment at the beginning. I think it's important to understand that it's a process and as you walk through life together, as you see how they interact with different people, as you see how they approach challenges and things like that, you'll begin to decide for yourself almost whether or not that's somebody that you want to spend the rest of your life with. But again, you won't, you won't know that until you're 35 and so don't worry about it right now. 
I have a friend that I want to form a deeper relationship with. How do I start? So I believe this question, if, I, if I'm understanding this correctly, I believe this person, it, they're friends with somebody and they want to maybe begin the dating process with them. They're interested in dating them. My opinion, my thought, how do I begin this? As awkward, as uncomfortable as it might be, I think the best way to begin this process is just by telling them. <laughs> and so maybe have a little bit of chill about it. You know, maybe don't start with, the Lord told me that I'm gonna marry you. Maybe don't start with that. Um, but I think being honest with them and telling them how you feel, where you're at, and the direction you wanna take the relationship um, I think is, is a great place to start. And then from there, uh, having patience um, and I guess understanding that, that it's not gonna happen overnight. Uh, the best relationships don't take place overnight. So understanding that it's a process, understanding that it takes time and having that, bringing that expectation to it, I think will help. Like I said, being honest, being upfront, telling them how you feel and then seeing if they feel the same way. It can be awkward, it can be uncomfortable, but I think it's really important to start from a place of honesty and then from there, giving it time and being patient. How do you handle a friend going through a toxic breakup? I think this is a great question. Um, I'll say this. First, my question back would be, do they think it's a toxic breakup? I, I, I think as a friend, it's good to be supportive it's good to listen more than to give advice. It's good to listen. It's good to be a safe place for them where they can talk and they can share. And then as a friend, I think one thing that you can do is you can help them see how they should be treated. You, you can help them to see what maybe is healthy, what maybe isn't healthy, and you can be a safe place for them to really work through these things and talk with them about these things. So understanding as a friend, you don't really have control of the situation, but you can be a safe place for your friend to, to go and to talk uh, and to work out these issues that they're facing and provide some, some solid uh, biblical context for the situation. Can girls make the first move? Wonderful question. Opinion, I would say yeah. In my wife and I situation, she did make the first move. She used a terrible pickup line on me. She walked up to me and she said, I like your shoes and she ran away. And so uh, I knew in that moment, this is the person I'm going to marry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, I believe that, yeah, girls can make the first move for sure. How do you heal from a breakup from a long-term relationship? Advice, tips. Um, I think it's important that you have a support system. You have friends that you can talk to. You have leaders that you can talk to, people whose advice you trust and people that you respect. And you make sure that you don't go through it alone. You don't isolate yourself. You don't cut yourself off from people. I think it's important that you reach out to people that are close to you and you're open with them and honest with them. And then I think it's important that you take it to the Lord. I think it's important that you go to the Lord in prayer and you're just open and honest and vulnerable with Him and you allow Him to speak to your heart. You allow Him to illuminate truth to you. You allow Him to really help you walk through this and navigate it. And He will. The Bible says that um, that He binds up the the, the, hurt, the hurting and the wounded. He, he binds up the brokenhearted. And so um, going to the Lord, talking to Him about it, allowing Him to heal your heart, and then going to friends and people that you're in close relationship with and getting perspective from them and talking with them, I think are all great tips, <laughs> great things to do. I see Nate Rubin asked, how do I get a girlfriend? Well, Nate, you need, listen, uh, I'm willing to provide my services to you. I can't answer that. There's a lot that you need to work on and I can't answer all of that in this short video. And so just call me, text me, reach out to me and we can begin the process. But there's hope for you. Don't give up. There's a special lady out there for you, Nate. And um, don't give up. Keep praying, keep believing. Take down all the dating profiles that you have though. That's the first place to start. Take down the dating profiles, come talk to me and I'll help you out.